So this, that's the first question, is kind of what does effective leadership look like? The second question is, how do you get there? How do you become an effective leader? How do you help other people become effective leaders? Again, if you look back at the sheet in front of you, in the center, um, you will see a paragraph. And this is a paragraph from the Rotary International website. There's a page called the Benefits of Membership. There are six benefits listed. This is the sixth of the six benefits listed. And you can read through it, but if we look at the last sentence, it says, being a Rotary leader provides further experience in motivating, inspiring, and guiding others. The key word is experience. You know, one of the axioms that we use when we work with people to help them understand leadership is that the only thing more complicated than a human being is a group of them. And so leadership is about impacting groups of people. So it's an inherently complex undertaking. The only way that you're going to be able to develop the skills to be able to lead effectively is by doing it and by having some things work and some things not. So experience is critical. And Rotary, as an organization, identifies leadership experience as one of the key benefits of membership. So Rotary is a big part of leadership development for its members and for people outside of the membership. But experience unexamined um, really does not lead to a great deal of learning. I have a 15-year-old. I see this happen every day. So you really have to examine the experience. So if you look at the model that's just underneath that, uh, that uh, paragraph, there are three elements. There's experience, there's guidance, and there's feedback. Guidance is guidance from lots of places. It can be books. And to tell you the truth, after reading a few of these, you've probably found everything you're going to find. But you can read books on uh, uh, leader, historical leaders. So a lot of historical accounts of leadership are really good to read. There's a lot of material out there that is really good. There are courses you can take on leadership. There are other leaders who you know, who you can go to, who you can get guidance. There are professional leadership development people like myself. There are uh, peers and other people who are in it with you. There are lots of people outside of yourself and a lot of materials outside of what you have in front of you where you can go for guidance. Uh, feedback is a place where, again, uh, part of what we do uh, it, whether it's in class or in a, in a development program, is help people understand what is good feedback and how do you get it. There's a tendency to look at feedback as getting another person's opinion. Now, getting another person's opinion does have information, but you have to do quite a bit of scrubbing to be able to get the information out of it because it's their perceptions. If they're in the situation with you, they probably have an agenda. So there's a lot that's wrapped around someone else's opinion. However, if you look at feedback as information, leadership is about having a particular impact. If you're leading with the intention of having something happen, there are things that you can look for, even if it's to improve yourself. So we have Adam here. Let's say hypothetically that Adam and I are working together on his leadership development, and Adam's style tends to be a little autocratic. Now, I don't know Adam, and that may not be true, but let's just, for the sake of this example, say that Adam tends to be very good at being very clear about exactly what people should do and what he wants. Now, that is a perfectly valid um, style or approach in a lot of leadership situations. But let's say Adam realizes that being able to be collaborative or lead in a more collaborative manner is going to be more effective in other situations, and he wants to learn to do that better. Now, he can go and he can try out being more collaborative, and then if Adam comes and I work for Adam and he says, I've tried to be more collaborative, how am I doing? I would say, well, boss, great. <laughs> but there's something interesting about this particular example, because if you go from an autocratic style to a more collaborative style, there are some things you're going to see. You're going to see people speaking up more. You're going to see people coming forward with more ideas. You're going to notice that you're implementing other people's ideas instead of just your own. You're also going to notice a certain level of discomfort, because if you tend toward being more autocratic 
and people get more comfortable and they start challenging you, that's not so much fun. So even your own feelings can be good feedback and that's data, that's information. And that's the kind of thing that we look for in terms of feedback. Is what's, what is it that you expect to see? And you can look for that. In addition to that, if I'm working for Adam, and Adam says, you know, have you noticed people speaking up more in meetings? Well, he's not asking me to evaluate him. He's asking for what I observe. And I'm probably going to be more accurate and more honest if he asks me that question. So you can have people around you help to look for those things that you're looking for. Thank you.